16 years they locked my ass up for possession with intent. Dolores Roach in the flesh. It's been like forever, mommy. You look like shit. Well, um, I have no money. We're not hiring today. No job prospects. And I bet that your boss's dad died. And so I'm pretty sure I know I look like shit. Thank you very much. Horror of Dolores Roach is about uh, a young woman that was incarcerated when she was in her early 20s for 16 years for selling marijuana. She gets out of jail. She has nowhere to go. She has no family. The boyfriend that she had kind of betrayed her. And she doesn't know what to do except to go back to where her home is, which is Washington Heights. When she gets to Washington Heights, she realizes the whole place has been gentrified. She doesn't know what to do. She has no money. There's one thing there that's still standing and that's the empanada loca. And that's the bodega slash restaurant where she used to hang out, where she used to get her favorite empanadas. And that represents Washington Heights. She walks in, she sees the very talented Alejandro Hernandez playing Luis there. And uh, that's, uh, uh, he's a relic from the past. She's a relic from the past. He allows her to stay there because he always kind of had a little thing for her. And they, they need each other right now. And then after that, all mayhem pursues. What have I done? I think Dolores is a person who's trying to find her way. She's she's uh, coming out. She's trying to survive. She's had a rough life. I mean, rougher that she went away for 16 years. She's trying to figure out who she is. Nobody wants to give her a job. She doesn't have anything to do. And, and uh, you know, she thinks, let me try this massage therapy, which I did in jail. And it's just, she's not going to let people take away what they took away before. And her actions are extreme, but that's what she feels she has to do to survive in this world. Don't worry about a thing, the Lotus. I took care of it. Luis is a very complicated guy. He's a cannibal, you could say, and that's the obvious, but you know, more so than that, and the more interesting thing I think is that he's a person that had a lot of deep pain. He's somebody that, you know, he's he's extremely lonely. This world of Empanada Loca, the store, his home where he's lived in the basement for 30 plus years is the only reality and the only world that he knows. And it's, it's about to be taken over by people that, you know, that are outsiders and want to claim that that's theirs. And, you know, he, he feels in many ways like a failure. Uh, you know, the one thing he's, he's a failure and he's always been looked at, I think, in his mind and to other people and, and, and you know, have always viewed him as a weirdo and, and a freak. And, you know, he's felt so isolated and so intensely lonely that when he sees Dolores come back, this is a, a reminder of how things used to be so good when the restaurant was thriving, when the barrio was thriving, and she was of that time. So I see that, and I've always had this thing for her, if I see when I was younger, and like, you know, when you're at that age and you're you're, you're admiring an older, attractive woman from afar, and, you know, he's always, he, he reminds you of his boyhood. And he sees that, and those are all the times that were good. And when he sees her, he wants to make sure that he can stay with her and that she doesn't leave. And she, he needs her to survive. It's the only thing he has. You've got all these people coming down here now. You need to be legit. Make a fucking plan and work on it every single day. Isn't that what I'm doing? No, you need a real massage table. Nelly, she's earnest. She plays, um, she's a juxtaposition to the other characters. She's, you know, the ingenue. She's a little innocent, doe-eyed. She doesn't necessarily know everything that's really going on, but she is there to take care of her community. She's there to take care of the shop. She's there to take care of her grandmother because she lives just above the shop and she's ride or die for anybody that's going on. If she likes them, that's her people. You got anything you want to get off your chest, Dolores? There's something wrong. I've been the meat delivery guy for supplier for this place over over 20 years. I was best friends with Ella, uh, with Luis's dad, and you know uh, I was his ride or die. And you know I promised him that I'd look after his son. And so now I see his son is kind of, I don't know what's up with his son, but I see Dolores is an innocent, so I'm there to protect Dolores. So I'm a protector.
But there's a lot of funny shit. And this series gives other people the opportunity to say, it's okay to laugh. We want you to laugh. We want to create some sort of levity. These are things that are actually happening in our communities, but we bring you in with some sort of laughter. So we don't only just have the drama. We don't only just have the comedy. We don't only just have the horror, the awful things that are happening that happen to, I think, um, marginalized communities at a higher rate. Um, we have all those things. They're well done. Our cast excels. Their writing excels in making those happen. And I think that's really how we cover all of those things to make it uh, accessible, palpable to a larger um, viewing audience. I don't necessarily think it's about the Black and Brown experience. I think it's a TV show which has Black and Brown people as the lead. Yes. With the Falcon. I don't think it's necessarily making any big, great, grand statements about being Black or Brown. It's just, we're the ones who are telling this particular story. And I think it's a universal story and all hum humans can relate to it because of just being humans and the living, ex just the experience of being a human being, going through shit. Um, I don't know if it necessarily speaks to a particular black or brown experience. There's nobody hitting anybody over the head here. We're just the the, the you know there is heightened reality. There are the, obviously there's there are moments that are that are outrageous, but the foundation of the story is uh, truth. And you know, gentrification happens. And where do people go when they get pushed out? And what happens when you get out of jail and nobody wants to give you a job? Uh, I mean, Dolores is extreme in what she does, you know. But uh, but it is crazy to be pushed out of the neighborhood that you've always known and loved, and see everything change so drastically. Uh, I I say that this happens. I'm from Chicago, and I see that in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I go back to Chicago. I go and I go to Humble Park in Logan, and I can't believe it. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. So yeah. I think any everybody that has been a part of that will relate to that. You want to give me a hand? I don't want to be a serial killer! <laughs> Mommy's been busy.